Hey guys, this is Phil from UndercageDot.com and this is LG's Wine Smart, their very first flip smartphone and probably the second uh, flip smartphone that you guys ever seen following the Samsung's Galaxy Golden. So this, although it looks like a typical flip phone, it's a typical Android smartphone built inside that's got a Snapdragon 400, 3.5 inches of a HVGA display uh, built in. So let's take a closer look at it. So this is the top this is the top of the folder and there's nothing no external screen no nothing the only thing there is is this little led that blinks depending on what you have received inside your phone and the wine is smart so it says and the top and the back is covered with the rubberish coating so it's less likely to get scratches on it so the back is an 8 megapixel camera without the LED flash and the one watt speaker that's pretty loud, the, L, uh, the carrier logo and the LG logo. The battery cover is detachable giving you access to replace that 1700 milliamps of battery and the micro SD card slot resides there as well along with the nano SIM card slot so you can um, upgrade or change, swap your SIM card. And to the left is a volume rocker and here you can put the strap on it and to the right is a 3.5 millimeters of standard headphone jack that is major uh upgrade compared to the galaxy golden because it didn't have the standard headphone jack and um, this is dedicated camera key you can launch or take photos with the key over here and opening up the flip gives you a little sound and the receiver the vga front facing camera and there is no um, the ambient sensor so you'll have to control your brightness manually over there and the full touch screen 3.5 inches of a HVGA resolution display that's 420 by 4, uh, 320 by 480 for you and um, LG logo the hinge goes here back home and the menu key there and the message album uh, the Kakoto messenger and the context key and there's a five-way navigation key talk cancel and the end key goes there along with the 10 key uh, keypads over there and um, that's pretty much it there's microphone and it's a little bit far from your mouth so um, it might not sound very clear depending on what you do and what you have what you should notice is that this is not a small phone of course there are lots of bigger phones around the market but um, even compared to a smaller phone like xperia z3 compact this is never a small phone Compared to the Galaxy Alphas or other phones, this is as big as the Galaxy S, the, the first Galaxy S was. And when you open it up, when it's close, it's closer to the uh, classic flip phones, but when you open it up, it's a lot bigger. This is a lot bigger, so this is less uh, friendly for you to use uh, with your one hand. And this obviously is going to be really far away from your mouth with, uh, to the microphone. Aside from that, um, this is a mixture of flip and the touch screen. So you can use it either with your keys or with your screen. So what you can do with your keys is there's back home and the menu key as usual. And this menu key doesn't work like the usual Android on the stock launcher. What it works like is like the classic feature phone. It brings up the app drawer. And um, there's, a back, uh, there's a home and the end key in the same time. So what they do is when you get out of an app with the home key it still is in your background memory so it's there when you when you kill it with the end key the app literally gets killed so it's not on your memory anymore and it just is gone all right uh, most of the built-in built apps work totally fine with the keypads they done a lot of cares there's a simple settings that um, allows you to change the settings that you use more uh, most often and the uh, call logs and the other things are just fine with the keypads to use and when you just punch in the numbers just it just shows up in the screen as simple as that but um, some apps don't exactly work flawlessly with the keypad um, let's say um, don't exactly have the best example but uh, when you're web surfing there are some apps that do the image based not the focus based so in, or in order to use that you might want to scroll down your screen and um, just use a touch screen instead uh, and the other functions just work totally fine but the thing is we want the keypad and the thing about the keypad is this does not have the um, the t9 uh, prediction so you'll just have to punch in the 
letters one by one it doesn't do t9s or predictions so that's a little bummer and if you feel like installing a third-party keyboard they're not gonna do much job they're just simply gonna understand your keys as numbers and just like punching numbers instead of the letters so you are left with no option but the stock LG keyboard that doesn't have prediction so that's pretty much the keypad uh, the shortcuts work totally fine uh, but the thing is the keypads don't exactly show most of the useful functions in the Android operating system because they are already fully touchscreen and the, there are lots of apps today that do not work with the keypad. So if you're just sticking with the basic apps, because the main target for this phone is the elderly population that do not uh, want to use the touchscreen or are not familiar with the touchscreen. And uh, for those, this could be useful uh, if you only want to talk, text, and um, some basic Android app, smartphone apps like the messengers or say camera sharing, that kind of things, it could be okay. But the catch over here is the call quality isn't that good since the microphone is so far away and the phone quality itself is not that great. Uh, it feels distant and um, it sometimes loses signals and um, there are issues like that. So if you're the main target, if you're included in the main target, uh, you could find this useful and somewhat interesting and even easy to use, but um, we're not really sure if it's gonna satisfy your basic demands like the, the voice calls or text messaging since it doesn't even have the T9 supported. If you're just like a mainstream population with the basic smartphone uses and if you wanna get the hang of the, um, the keypad with your phone, this is definitely not for you. There are lots of apps that do not support uh, keypad inputs and this, you'll find yourself a lot using the screen instead of the keypad. And uh, if, you're, if you're using the screen, you might wanna hold it like that or like that. And this is definitely not the easiest way to use your smartphone. So what is this phone for? Well, this does have its pros. Um, the camera is actually pretty good. It's an eight megapixel camera. Doesn't have any flash or the OIS or any fancy things like that, but it takes a photo good enough. And the speaker is really loud, uh, especially if you're, you have a hearing problem, perhaps this will be loud enough for you. For those instances, it's okay, but the battery life is not spectacular. It could be okay if you're not using phone a lot, but this is nothing more. The performance isn't that powerful, although I think it's just fine for the phone basic like this. So I'm not really sure if I probably for no one, uh, even for the main target or the people aside from the main target, this is never a great choice. So if you're waiting for a flip phone, this not be your choice in any sort. So that was why smart. Um, it comes in two different colors. There's a black one and the white one. And depending on the carrier that you go get from, this comes through um, all three carriers in South Korea, KT, SK Telecom, and the LG U+. Plus. If you get one from the KT, you will have a yellow Kakao button. So depending on what you would get, there are these designed for you. So that was LG Wine Smart. Uh, if you want to check out more photos and the reviews for Wine Smart, don't forget to drop by undercage.com and um, our other channel, Undercage View as well. We got social media as well, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. Don't forget to follow to get the latest of Undercage. Thank you, and we'll see you guys later.